So when we're doing reactions and you want to know what states of matter do I assign, you really need a sheet of paper with you for that to kind of to kind of do most of them. However, there are some keys that will kind of repeat time and time again. So if you are in a double replacement reaction or a single replacement reaction, the assumption is that you are in water unless some kind of weird circumstances have occurred. So you start by assuming this unless it kind of says otherwise. So for those, anytime you have a salt, we have a metal and a non-metal, or one of those two things replaced by a polyatomic ion, then you're going to look up whether that salt is soluble. If that salt is soluble in water, you're going to write down the state of matter as being aqueous. If it's insoluble, then you're going to write down solid. So your go-to guess should be aqueous or solid, and, and of those two, aqueous is more common. Okay. Most of our salts are soluble in water when we're doing a double replacement reaction. Usually it'll have one precipitate and, and one, one soluble product, and both of your reactants will be soluble. Okay. For single replacement, that's a little trickier because you could have halogens in there that might be liquids or gases or solids and things like that. But anytime you have a salt in a single replacement reaction, you want to go through the same type of process. If you have acids, probably going to be aqueous. Okay, so anything with an H, H whatever, then the go-to guess on that is aqueous. It's probably in solution. That's how we deliver most of our acids. Okay, then you want to know some common gases. You want to know things like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, fluorine, chlorine, CO2. That those are gases that are common. If you have some kind of uh, non-metal oxide, it's probably a gas. So if you have SO2, the assumption there would be that it's a gas. Liquids, there are not many, so you shouldn't be guessing that much, but bromine is a common liquid. If you were to make mercury metal, that would be a liquid. Uh, that's why those two are a different color on periodic tables sometimes. They're blue usually. Um, and, then, and then water, water you think would be a liquid all the time, but actually when you burn things, it comes out as steam. And so if you're doing something that's very hot, that can be a, a, a gaseous product. Okay. Um, and so, so really we could include water up here as well. So if you have a list of kind of what things are, are liquids and gases, those are more the rarity. The biggest thing that you're going to be tasked with is, is, is something aqueous or, or solid. And that's based on for salts if it's insoluble in water or if it's soluble. Now for synthesis reactions, Kind of depends on what you're dealing with. So if I have something like lithium bromide and it says I heat it, probably not in water. But if I run electricity through it, that's probably aqueous. Okay? And so you'll have a little bit of leeway on those. So if you have a salt here and you picked solid, that would be pretty understandable. Uh, if you picked aqueous based on the conditions, that would also be probably an acceptable answer. Okay? Uh, but the biggest thing for synthesis is if you have something plus water, then after you do that, you have to look and see if it makes sense to say aqueous or not. If you make a salt, like you make a base, then you should be choosing aqueous or solid because you put it into water and therefore now you're looking at soluble and insoluble. Now if you put something in water and you make hydrogen, well that's going to bubble out of the solution and therefore that would go and defer to being a gas. Okay? So this one is definitely tricky and you kind of have to read into the context of the reaction a little bit to be able to come up with it, although some of the things are pretty obvious. If you make hydrogen, that's going to be a gas. If you make a halogen, fluorine and chlorine will be gases, bromine will be a liquid, iodine will be a solid. If you make a salt or an acid or base, then you're probably going to be looking at, is it aqueous? Now some examples where that's not the case, if you have a salt and you're heating it to cause a decomposition, that's going to be a solid. So that's something that you're heating outside of solution, and when you make it into calcium oxide, also going to be a solid CO2, that will be the gas. Okay.